We love getting your questions, so we want you to keep them coming via Facebook, Twitter, and on our webpage. Who knows, we might just answer your question here in the studio audience next. Welcome back. Actress Tisha Campbell Martin is here with us today, and right now we're talking to Tamisha, who has been using food and alcohol to numb the pain from a sexual assault that happened when she was 12. Now, before the break, Tisha, you gave Tamisha this amazing gift, and you gave all of us this gift of being able to just share that she's not alone in this struggle. And what was that like, though, for you to, to be able to, to, to share To that? share this, um, I'm shaking um, uncontrollably. I'm nervous, and um, it's not from fear or whether what people will think about me. Um, I just, it, you kind of go back into being a little girl again, mm -hmm. to a certain extent. Like, I, I am empowered, and I never let anybody make me into becoming a victim at all. I've never done that all my life. I always focused in on, on my greatness and the things that make me great. But for me right now, you kind of do become that person that vulnerable being you were at the time when it kind of happened. Tamisha, is that what happens to you? You just feel kind of lost in that essence, I guess. And it's just like everything that I've done to like make myself better at that point, I feel like just disappears. What happens? Do you relive it? It, it just makes me feel disgusting. And because of that, like every time a guy it comes into my life, I can't get too into the relationship. When it gets to that point, I ruin it myself. What's the date? February 28th. Take us back to February 27th. I don't want to meet that little 12-year-old. <laughs> I feel like I was really happy. Everything seemed to be going right. I had great friends. And so the fact that someone who was my friend at the time you share everything with could possibly hurt you and not care. You're still the same person you were February 27th. And you have to understand when you have people who are attracted to you as a, as a light. You are a light. You are a beam of light. It's not your fault that you're this big beam, of this big spiritual beautiful person. This person took advantage and wanted it for himself and because he couldn't have it. Your friend, same thing, your friend. But that doesn't mean that everybody in your life is that way. Every man that comes and is attracted to you is attracted to the February 27th little girl. And that little girl, let me just say that. When you went to that little girl, you lightened up. You sure you did. You smiled. Your face came alive. And guess what? That next day, somebody stole your innocence. And we're going to reclaim it. That's right. a little bit about where she goes from here because I think that that is really it's the most important piece yeah and it's it's uh, you know you as a, a sexual assault victim you're experiencing there's really three phases of sexual assault recovery it's immediate and acute the adjustment phase and the integration resolution phase and what happens with these these aren't uh, set in stone because they tend to overlap and I would think, I think you're kind of stuck in the immediate and acute phase and then you go into resolution and then you numb it out because of the pain. So what you've experienced is trauma. Mm -hmm. And we can't treat the trauma unless we learn how to support you and not medicating. And what I mean by medicating is numbing out the painful That's feelings. Right. Yeah. What have you tried? What are your coping mechanisms? What have you tried in the past? Uh, I've been, um, I tr I almost did suicide once. Mm -hmm. I took my mom's uh, medication, and I she had a brand new big bottle, and I did all took all of them, and then I drank right after it. 
So that was one thing that I tried. It didn't do anything. Other than that, I just, I don't really have any other way. It, it's hard to see your parents' uh, face when they're just like, we couldn't help you. My dad cries every time. So it's just like, I don't want to see you cry. So you're, I, feeling, you're feeling like you're hurting them? Yeah. So it's just like, I feel like it's easier if it just hurts me than mm -hmm. other people getting involved in it. It's just like, you shouldn't have to feel what I feel. It's, it's not fair. It's really important that you hear today that nothing you did do or didn't do ever made you deserve this. There is one person responsible for this, and it is the bastard that did it. And the reason why I'm crying is because I see a lot of myself in you and what I could have done and what I could have been. But you, you're destined for greatness. Each of us are. You can't stop that anymore. You can't. So here's what we're going to do. Um, there is a place in Dallas that can do one or two. First, we need to treat this addiction. And then we're going to treat the trauma. And we're going to do some of that at the same time. But Chico West, owner of West Counseling, has graciously offered his services to help support you. And he's got, he, this is a top-notch outpatient counseling program. It's located in Dallas with very skilled therapists specializing in trauma, addiction, and relationship issues. He also owns a place called Gaston House, and it treats young adults for exactly what you're going through. Yeah. That you will become stronger and more of a survivor and face life differently because of the recovery that you lean into and because of what happened to you. Are you willing to accept this gift? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Coming up. It's not a personal judgment on you, but I think this is the most selfish thing that you could do. This would be a personal judgment. I'm happy to judge you right now. <laughs> getting your questions so we want you to keep them coming via Facebook Twitter and on our webpage who knows we might just answer your question here in the studio audience next